Hi, my name's Steve and welcome to the Seaside Allotment Channel. And what I wanted to do today was talk a little bit about how we get a really nice variety and abundance of brassicas all the way through the Hungry Gap. So right now when I'm filming this, it's almost the middle of April and all of the brassica plants that we've had over winter are all running to seed. So all of the collets, all of the sprouts, all of the kales, in fact, most of the winter cabbages, they're all going to seed right now. So the spring cabbages, they're not quite ready yet. So we've got a gap that we need to fill. And I definitely wouldn't want to live on spring cabbages anyway, just, you know, that's not a wide enough variety of uh, plants for me. Because purple sprouting broccoli, the florets from those and the leaves, they're pretty good. So we're still taking a nice harvest off those, but the weather is so warm at the moment that they're quite advanced, those plants. And definitely by the middle, you know, by late April, those plants will be finished. So basically we've got this hungry gap now for brassicas from late April to early June that we've got to fill somehow. And brassicas are such an important part of our diet that I've set myself the challenge every year now for a couple of years of trying to get the best range of brassicas during that difficult period. So there's a few simple things and a few slightly trickier things. I thought I'd go through those now. So one of the things that I like to do is I like to plant a few brassicas in the polytunnel. And generally I plant some kales and my favorites are uh, Reflex, uh, Black Magic um, and Red Boar. And they provide a profusion of kale leaves in about the period from February all the way through until about mm, late April time. And by then, they'll also be going to seed. They run about two to three weeks later uh, because they're planted so late. So they're planted uh, in October in the polytunnel, the small plants. Um, and as I say, they, they then go to seed now, um, but they're still providing a really lush uh, range of leaves. So that's a nice trick. But it doesn't really get us solve that May problem. So what are we going to eat in May? Well, one of the things we can do is grow a perennial kale. So we grow the Taunton Dean, um, and that's a really nice plant. And it's really thriving at this time of year in spring. Um, and throwing off a profusion of new growth, really lovely tender leaves. And we've got a few of those plants. We've got one at home in the back garden, uh, which is a really beautiful tree-like plant. Uh, and then we've got a couple down the back of the polytunnel outside. Um, but again, I wouldn't really want to just be eating perennial kale leaves all the way through uh, May. So we've still got to do something else. And so what my basic strategy is, either then to overwinter plants, so to sow them in September, October time and overwinter them, or to plant them really early. So the things that work really well overwintered are things like uh, cauliflowers and calabrese. And so what I do with those, I plant those in the polytunnel, in this bed just in front of me here, which for the rest of the year has had, well, not for the rest of the year, but from uh, October through until uh, February, that's just had lettuce and spinach in it. So what I do then is I make a few gaps and I interplant cauliflowers and calabrese all the way down that border. I leave the spinach and the lettuce in there and still harvesting those now, but those uh, cauliflowers and calabrese are growing incredibly strongly and so just as the purple sprouting broccoli is finishing in May, beginning of May, late April, beginning of May, those cauliflowers and calabrese are ready for harvest early May into you know late May. About that time when I take those out that's when I'm planting the peppers into that same bed. So it's, it's just a, a multiple use for that bed, at a time when we don't really need that much spinach in the polytunnel or lettuce because we've got so much outside. 
So I'll also overwinter a few sprout plants. Uh, and again, they're sown in September, October time. Uh, and what we do is we sow them in a large module tray, about the same size as this one that's got the celery in it. And I will plant nine cells, well I actually plant 12 cells, so I've got a few spare, with three um, sprout plants in each cell. And so they grow into a lovely little clump of brassica, of, of um, sprout plants, and I plant those nine cells in a square meter. So that's 27 sprout plants in a square meter. And the reason I do that is because what I want is a profusion of leaves early on in the season, and I'm not, don't care about the sprouts, because I'll actually take those plants out in sort of June, July time, when we've got a mass of different uh, um, brassicas by that time. So it's not so important. Um, and the quality of those plants is starting to degrade because they've been pushed so hard and they're so tightly pack, packed together. So sprout plants work really nicely like that. And I absolutely love sprout leaves. I think they're the tastiest, tenderest uh, and uh, healthiest of all of the leafy brassica greens. So the next thing is we've overwintered some spring cabbages and they're going to be ready sort of May, early June time. Uh, and that's a really easy thing to do. And then finally, we'll plant some, sow some um, kales, some Carvalho, Carvalho Root Nero and Black Magic. They do really well. And some of the curly kales don't do quite as well, but uh, they, they're okay. Uh, and we'll sow those in January and we'll plant those, again, interplanted generally into some of my low tunnels where I've got lettuces or spring onions or something like that. So I'm getting a double crop. So as those lettuces are finishing, those um, sprouts are coming, are growing to, into big plants. And gradually I'll just clear the lettuces out and leave the bed to the sprouts or clear the spring onions out and leave the bed to the sprouts. Uh, and I do the same with, with the kales as well. Um, so that's basically my strategy and it does mean that we get a really rich diet. So all the way through the hunger gap, we can eat a few leaves of perennial kale. Very early in the hungry gap, we're eating these polytunnel kales and then a bit later on, we're eating the sprout leaves and the kales that we've got under cover. And then we're eating purple sprout and broccoli. Then we get the spring cabbages and then we get the cauliflowers and the calabrese. And then of course, all the outdoor kales come on stream, things like that. So yeah, it's, it's a really nice challenge to have and I really enjoy it every year. And you're always trying to do something a little bit more creative. Oh, I forgot to mention Romanesco cauliflowers as well. So we probably overwinter those uh, and we'll plant those outside and then they'll be ready about June time. So uh, yeah, a really nice selection. So I'd love to hear what you do. How do you fill that hungry gap from the uh, perspective of brassicas? Because, you know, there's other things we can do as well. And I might just quickly mention the fact that maybe you can see some of these little tents of bubble wrap behind me. Uh, well, they're all full of beans. Uh, and so we get lovely range of dwarf and climbing French beans and runner beans um, in sort of late May, early June time as well. And so that provides an extra bit of variety to the diet. So anyway, with that, I hope you enjoyed this quick video and I'll see you soon.